A little boy is getting some big encouragement tonight from a world famous wrestler. As Eyewitness News reporter Shante Land shows us, kind words and two action figures are helping a Coatesville family squash bullying. For six year old James Barnard, these action figures are everything, which is why a special message from one of the wrestlers meant the world. Playing in the ring is a normal routine for James Barnard. His two favorite action figures are Goldberg and Steve Austin. A fun time at home, but his parents say it's been challenging for the first grader at school. There were a couple kids in particular that were constantly egging him on and trying to get reactions out of him, older kids. So James and his dad, Adam Barnard, came up with a plan. My brother Matt gave him these action figures, and I said, why don't you put them, take them with you to school? And uh, he got really excited, got really lit, real lit up about it. And uh, he said, Daddy, take my picture. I was okay. So I took his picture. He says, can you, can you send this to Goldberg? So he did. In a tweet, to their surprise, the famous wrestler responded saying, we got your back. Thanks for getting my back and thanks for ke keeping me safe. Touching words for his father to hear because he too was bullied as a kid. I, I just never wanted my kids to have to worry about bullying and worry about that and go through the same things I did when I was a kid. And because of Goldberg, James won't have to. Now every day, packing his courage to conquer the world. Since Goldberg gave James that message, he now listens to his theme song every morning before school. In Coatesville, Shante Lands, CBS 3 Eyewitness News. Hello there. James is here. My son um, has joined us today. Go ahead and say hi to the microphone, James. Hi. You have fun today? You having fun? Yes. Yeah, you've been sitting here for a while. You've been a good kid. He's also brought his action figures of Steve Austin and Bill Goldberg, which are integral what? parts of the story. And his sweet Hulkamania shirt. Yes, dude. Yep. That is the coolest shirt ever. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Flex, flex it, on them. Flex, flex it, them. Flex right? it. Now rip it. Don't actually rip it. Don't <laughs> your, your, your mother will kill me. It's yep. a really nice shirt. So the show today is about bullying. And the show is about what happened when my son was bullied and how Goldberg fit, fits into this equation. Without further ado, here is a conversation with Bill Goldberg. All right, so uh, this story has really been kind of a whirlwind for us at home. Um, the story of you tweeting back to James has really taken off and become something more of a tweet, um, kind of become its own story. Um, what was it that struck you about James's photo and the story itself that, that really caught your attention? Uh, you know, the, the, the fact is, is that um, it's, it's such a, you, you can't answer that in one, in one sentence. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, all I'm going to say is it's the caveat of me doing my own social media. Um, you wish and would hope for the ability to help each and every human being on the planet that would ever need anything from you. Right. But the fact is we can't. And so anytime that any kid needs anything and I see it, then, you know, I do whatever I can within my power to help, especially in a bullying, bullying situation, especially with a kid so young, right. um, you know, um, they're, they're defenseless and they're, they're like, like Play-Doh. Yeah. And, uh, it's a very, very integral part in the formation of them as human beings, their childhood, and they can be scarred quite easily. And the rest of their life can be, you know, uh, uh, looked upon in relation to what happened to them, you know, negatively in the in their childhood. And and I don't I don't want anyone that I can help to have to go through anything negative, especially something you know so horrible as that. So if a phone call, if a tweet, if uh, a package, you know, can make such a huge difference in anybody's life then we as human beings, uh, our duty is to help. At least that's what they used to be. Right. And, you know, I, 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 do it, I do it for him. I do it for you. I do it for me. I do it to set an example. There are a lot of things that I, a lot of reasons why I do it. Um, it's, uh, uh, 
It's what we should do. We should treat people how the way we want, how we want to be treated. Period. End of story. There's nothing else that should be attached to that, like a Christmas tree, by any means. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a simple equation. And if a kid needs something, you help them. Period. End. Now, I guess, kind of tying to that as well, you know, with with who you are as as the individual, as the Bill Goldberg. Um, how does it feel? How does it make you feel to still have such an impact like this in young people's lives? I mean, you've been in the business for, you know, over 20 years, you're one of the most accomplished wrestlers of all time. Um, what does that mean to you to have a young person still look up to you and, and, and have such an impact on his life? Well, initially I got into the business because of my bank account and it turned into <laughs> something and it turned into something that, you know, the, the only dream that I had was to be in the NFL hall of fame, you know, to be the best of the best at what I chose to do for, for a living. Right. And I thought, you know, and for a number of reasons, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be that because of a personal goal. And I wanted to be that because that position gives you the ability to help a lot of people. And as I was standing up doing the, the ceremony for the um, WWE Hall of Fame, I realized that, you know, as I said, it, it, the WWE Hall of Fame helped me out more than the NFL Hall of Fame ever would have. Wow. Uh, with with helping with kids mm -hmm. because you're more visible you're out there so one of the reasons why i got in the business as i said was to make a difference to be a role model for kids it's the reason why i came back it's the reason why i still even consider doing it right and if you can do that once let alone a thousand times or a million times and you know uh with 20 years 30 years in between the onset of you as a character and that person that people look up to and, and someone who still walks the earth and, and, and is a, and still is that guy. It's an honor each and every day for anyone to appreciate what I did and have it positively affect them. When I was James's age, like I was experiencing a lot of bullying myself. It was mostly based in my religious background growing up in an Irish Catholic neighborhood as the only Jewish person in the, on the block. So being able to see you on TV was huge and um try being try being the only jewish person one of the only jewish people in tulsa oklahoma <laughs> oh, so, so uh so, so i i experienced the same thing yeah um i was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your own background like as a child maybe like being jewish do you think that had any sort of impact to your career today and your connection with judaism especially when it comes to bullying well, there's no question about it. Um, I had my idols to, to look up to when I was a kid, and they were my father and my brothers. Um, other than that, you know, with Sandy Koufax, there were a couple other Jewish prominent athletes, but, I mean, you know, they were few and far between. And um, I, I, I knew that the, if I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish as a whole, then the niche, which would be my religion, uh, uh, would benefit also from the success because it would propel somebody like them, you know, to the forefront where people, you know, maybe would listen to them in a different light than, than situations prior, uh, you know, like being in a courtroom or being, you know, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a lawyer. And that's, that's, that's the atypical, you know, Jewish profession. Yeah. And, uh, I, I am, I am, you know, I'm, I'm the antithesis physically of what, you know, people think of when they think of Jewish people. And to, for me, that was, that was freaking awesome. Well, I mean, it's really could, cool to see I like the be, Samson figure instead well, of, but that. I could be that, I could be that guy and, and I could give every little kid that was in the situation that I was in when I was a kid picked on, um, the hope I could give him someone to look to and go, you know what? This guy did it. I could do it. Hell I can do it. I can do anything. And if I can give just somebody hope, then, you know, man, that, that's huge. That's invaluable. What I'm able to do for James, you can't put money on that. And, and, you know, that's the gift that I get from, from wrestling, from, you know, being in the business, from being somebody that people, you know, recognize all the time, you know, it's not the money. It's not being in front of people on television and thinking that I'm, you know, I'm somebody because I'm, I'm able to extend it into Hollywood. And those are all cool opportunities, but it doesn't make me better than anybody. 
you know, the ability to make decisions, um, you know, like, like the one I did to reach out in this situation. That's, that's what people should be based upon. How can we as a society combat bullying in a meaningful way? Like, what do you think we could instill in kids today to have them refrain from behaviors, behaviors like that? And conversely, what message would you give to James and other kids like him going through a similar experience that he's been going through recently? Would he want anyone to go through the experience that he's going through? Absolutely not. Then why in God's name would anyone want to bully anybody else? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. A, yeah. it's a simple, it's a simple equation. It right. truly is. You know, it, it's, it's bare, it's stripping everything down to the bare necessities. Right. And as a society, we need to do that because we have way too much going on, you know, to, to cloud our judgment mm-hmm. and, and to negatively affect decisions. And because it just does, it does just that it clouds it and it, and it takes away from the original intent of, of existence. You know, mm-hmm. existence is not to, to better yourself, to be better than the next person. It's to, it's to better yourself, to be able to look in the mirror and know that you've given a thousand percent and be proud of what you do. Have the people that, that came before you be proud of what you do. Have the people that came at that come after you see that you've set an example for them in a positive way and, and collectively work together as a big team, little me society and, and, and prosper. You know, it's, it's pretty simple. Yeah, so, I agree. So do you think that with these new platforms like Twitter and social media, uh, especially individuals like yourself where you're looked up to as role models, do you think it's kind of uh, a duty of other people to kind of stand up like you have and <laughs> That's an understatement. Kid. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, I, I don't think social media deems it a responsibility. Sure. I think being in that position deems it a responsibility. Anytime that you make it to a, to a position to where you're, you know, I mean, you're, you're a, a visible entity, you know, that somebody um, sees in a positive light, whether it be as an actor or whether it be as an athlete, and someone to be looked up to uh, because the, because they're doing an you know a, a, a job that's you know whether it be playing sports for a living and getting paid millions of dollars or, or whatever it may be an enviable job you know and that yeah. gives somebody a voice you know when you have a fan base the, the 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 second you have a fan base your responsibility triples you know because not only are you doing it for them and yourself, but you're doing it for the next person. So you, you have a responsibility. Social media is just one platform, which I, I detest, but if we didn't have social media, we, I wouldn't be on this conversation right now, you know? So it's all life's about pluses and minuses. Is it better off in the end or is it worse? You know, how many people get bullied online? It's amazingly ridiculous. You know, it is. Um, I think about even in my own experience, what it would have been like had the Internet been as prevalent as it is now, knowing the experiences with bullying that I had. I I don't know how I would have really survived mentally if the Internet had been as as sort of prevalent and open as it is now. It's um, a lot worse Hopefully now. you would have had responsible parents to keep you off the internet. Well, you know, yeah, that too. Long, that a too. Long period of time. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. I mean, I wish it. Yeah. Somebody look over me. Um, but I have someone here who would like to say hello to you. Uh, James, do you want to go hi- ahead and say hi to Goldberg? Hi Goldberg. What's up James? How you doing buddy? Good. How's school? Good. What grade are you in now? Um, first, First grade, man, that is cool. So, how long have you been in school? Um, because summer, summer just happened. So, like, you've been in a week or two weeks or something. It's been about three weeks, right? Three weeks. And so, my boy's thirteen, and he's been in school for two weeks. Wow. And uh, he is loving it. He cannot. He could not wait for summer to be over, and so he could get back to school and see all his buddies. Did you feel like that too, buddy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you want to? Well, hey, is, is hey, is school getting better with those bully guys? Are they stopping their stopping their bullying? Um, not yet. Not yet. Well, does it make you feel a little different now when they do it? Mm-hmm. Good. Good, because the only people that are suffering in this bullying thing should be them, because we should feel very sorry for them. 
because they feel they they feel so bad about themselves they have to bully other people to make them feel good they have to try to control other people and that is that is not good so whatever they say whatever they do just laugh it off don't let it bother you because you are a much bigger person than they are and you have got goldberg and all the wwe guys on your side and so nobody can beat you that's awesome isn't it bud Mm -hmm. isn't that so cool what do you want to what do you want to say to goldberg about everything that's happened what do you want to say thanks for sparing um Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> yeah, you got it, partner. I beat him every single time I see him. That's right. That's, that's right. That's for sure, man. Well, anything you need from us, you let me know. And when we come in the area, um, I'm not I'm not really watching like every week. So you guys got to let me know when a show's coming close and you guys want to come and you guys can be my guest. Okay. That would be super awesome, wouldn't it, bud? Mm-hmm. I'll let him, definitely let him know. Bill Goldberg, thank you so much for your time. And I just, I want to say thank you from, from my family for everything that you and the WWE have done for James. It's really been an unbelievable experience. And I, I just can't thank you enough for this. It really means the world to me. So thank you for everything. Well, my friend, you know, uh, it took five minutes from my time initially. And to know that just taking a small amount of time can make such a huge difference in somebody's life and somebody's situation it's it's a it's a very valuable lesson that people need to understand that you need to take take the time you know you got to take the time because life's way too short and James is way too cool a kid not to respond to so um, <laughs> he's amazing I love yeah. you guys and you guys be really be good and if you need anything you let me know and uh, those bullies keep messing with you you just look at them and say you're next that's right <laughs> thank you so much sir we really appreciate your time today. Have a great day. You got a partner. Be All good, right. James. I will. See you, buddy. Jeffrey, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks we really appreciate me. it. We're also going to drop a couple of links inside of the uh, the notes for the show. So uh, thanks again for joining us. And thank you again to Bill Goldberg. It is absolutely appreciated. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Foundation Radio is recorded and produced by Adam Barnard and Sam Kreps. Our intro and outro is produced by Dumb Ugly. Special thanks to Greg Mead, Joe Keen, Jeff Quinn, and Dr. Ruth Almy. Leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at Foundation underscore radio. Find us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Foundation Radio Pod. This has been a Foundation Radio production.